Hey, so uh, we've got a hard workout today. Um, I'm going to use a bunch of equipment. I'm going to show you the workout uh, today. I'm going to be working on my back and my hamstrings. Uh, technically, that would be a pull workout. That's the workout right here. Is that good? Okay. Um, I slept well. I rested well. I feel good after yesterday's workouts. And my triceps are feeling pretty damn good, actually. Um, I don't see a little definition there, but like a lot more work to do, right? Um, aside from that, I think I'm ready to kill this workout. <laughs> Uh, we're going to use a bunch of equipment today, uh, some quality stuff. Um, first thing is this weighted vest. This thing is uh, 26 and a half pounds, um, about 12 kilograms. So uh, yeah, I got this at Decathlon, right? Uh, it's good quality. I got two extra oh there's a little sand in there from oh i do train outdoors and stuff when there's no quarantine right so i got these steel plates in there so i got two extra in there uh so that puts it up to about 26 and a half pounds um it gets heavy uh whatever um next thing we're gonna be using i don't know if you can see the yellow the yellow um Whatchamacallem, the ankle weights in the back. Uh, I've used them in previous workouts. And over here we got a pull-up bar. So I literally got this on Amazon. Like, this is a good one, right? Nice ergonomic grips and stuff. And, you know, you can do your wide pull-ups. You could do your neutral grips. You could do your chin-ups. Or your narrow grip pull-ups. Right? Neutral neutral wide out here um yeah this thing cost me literally twenty dollars I, I was i was super fortunate to find this on sale uh free shipping was prime so yeah twenty dollars you cannot go wrong you could go to any sports store get one of these um so as you can see the door behind me is open today and I'm going to be using that just because it looks better in video rather than at this door over here. Uh, but maybe in the future I'll do one of my pull workouts over there so you could get like a side profile, right? Um, of how I'm working and stuff like that. But uh, alright, so I'm going to go set this up. It literally takes like 5 seconds or so. So I'm going to go set this up and uh, we'll get this workout going. All right, so we're all set up. Um, I got my coffee again, yeah. Uh, put a dash of salt in it. I use Himalayan pink salt, just cause it's not only sodium chloride. There are like other trace minerals and stuff. Of course, the large amount of salt is, uh, the majority of what is made of is sodium chloride, but at least you're getting, you know, other trace minerals and stuff with uh, the Himalayan pink salt. Also, I got some turmeric in there. Um, so this is basically not gonna break my fast. Yes, I'm still fasting. I'm gonna be doing this workout fasted. Um, anything under six calories is not gonna break a fast, all right? So um, black coffee, no sugar, obviously, no creamer, um, will not break your fast. For those of you who want a little energy in the mornings, especially those of you who are doing like keto, of course, you guys will be familiar with uh, keto coffee, right? Or bulletproof coffee. Um, yeah, so um, 
if you want me to explain bulletproof, okay, I'm gonna explain bulletproof coffee, right? So bulletproof is a brand of coffee, um, by Dave Asprey, right, and his company Bulletproof. Um, keto coffee is basically blending fat with an acid. So now the acid in coffee is super strong, right? Coffee is like a super acidic liquid. Um, it takes about, I think, 32 glasses of water to neutralize one glass of coffee, right? Um, so yeah, you use the fat, typically ghee or butter, some good grass-fed, high-quality stuff, some organic coconut oil, and then you blend it, right? So by blending it, you emulsify the fat with the acid, the coffee, um, and it becomes a super creamy, frothy, <laughs> it's delicious, right? Um, I think there are studies that show that it technically doesn't break fast because it won't uh, spike your insulin, so you'll still be in a fasted state. Um, so yeah, I guess enough about that. Uh, we'll talk more about like diet and little tips and tricks and stuff like that. Um, yesterday after my workout, uh, I ate a bunch of carbs. Uh, I ate some gluten-free spaghetti, um, some paneer, which is Indian cottage cheese, right? Uh, and chicken. So uh, I feel pretty good today. Uh, not like I'm off carbs or on keto or anything. I've just been following for the past about 10 days uh, a paleo style of eating where it's just fruit and meat and vegetables, right? Um, so this is basically pre-agricultural revolution and there are no like cultivated grains and stuff like that. Of course, if you have to think about paleolithic times, you know, hunter gatherers would occasionally come across a swamp and they would find like wild rice or do you know what I mean? Like millets and stuff like that. And then they would eat grains. So occasionally, you know, they would eat grains and stuff like that, right? Um, that being said, we in modern day society just eat too much of the same thing over and over again. And it's just been processed to such an extent to where, well, our bodies sometimes don't recognize some of these substances, right? So uh, going back to roots, uh, maintaining our center, very holistic approach to fitness and health and optimizing, you know, performance, optimizing health, uh, all that good stuff. So awesome. Good morning and uh, or good night or good evening, wherever in the world you are. And uh, let's get started on this workout. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's go. All right. All right, I'm gonna start with uh, 20 good mornings. I love this movement. Uh, this is just part of my warm up. I would put on the vest, but I'm gonna have to take it off after when I do my single leg hip thrust and stuff, so I'm not gonna do it. It's just 20 reps. Uh, if you know how to do a good morning, follow along. Oh yeah. For those of you who want to actually do this workout, get prepped, get, get prepped, watch this video, uh, make a list of what you need, you could just do this body weight, but you do need a pull-up bar or a place to hang. Um, all right, let's get started. 20 good mornings. <sighs> so I do like to warm up, right? Uh, I like to warm up my entire body is, you know, because I've just woken up really. Well, I took a shower, right? But like my body's kind of cold, meaning like, you know, you got to warm up your ligaments and of your muscles get it flowing I like doing flow work like this just honoring the natural rhythms of the body and do you know what I mean just being a child sometimes is so healing and it's so good for your body get some twists in there
I love this move to open up the hips. Basically hip circles, but you use a squat tied in with it, right? So right here, I am literally loosening up the entire hip complex. Now I do it the other direction, right? Take your time, don't sink too low. Try to even out the number of circles on the way down and the number of circles on the way up. This gets your femur, which is your thigh bone, rotating, articulating correctly in your hip socket, right? You want good mobility. All right, 20 good mornings. I'm just gonna put that mat over there. All right. That is 20. I'm gonna move to the mat over here so you can see me do these hip thrusts. So these are single leg hip thrusts. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do them. I'm gonna show you a few variations. I'm going for 50 reps, 5 0. So, sorry, I'm just gonna move this out of here. I'm actually gonna take a little sip here. Oh, that is so good. And turmeric is an amazing flavor. All right, so I'm gonna show you what a hip thrust is or a glute bridge for some of you that know it is that. Yeah. So anytime I go up, I'm gonna exhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Another way you could do it is dorsiflex the feet, right? So you plant and hinge on your heels. I like this actually better. When you do your single leg hip thrust though, you want a good firm base, right? So in my hip thrust, I'm aiming to keep my ankle, knee, hip and shoulder in alignment, right? So it's gonna look like that. And back down, right? So I'm gonna be doing 50, so I'm gonna be actually alternating Finding that control. Three, four, five, ten, eleven. Twenty. Sorry, what was that? 36, 37? 37, let's say 37. 40. 
45, 46, 47, 48, 49, last one, boom. Oh wow, that feels amazing. All right, body weight hamstring curls, 30 reps on each leg. All right, so you can do these by taking the support of something. I like to train my balance. I do both ways, you know. I'll take balance sometimes and take support for balance, I mean, excuse me. And sometimes I'll just do it standing, right? So, uh, 30 reps each leg, right? Look ahead, nice and neutral. Six, seven, eight. Seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Oof. Those are the toughest set of uh, hamstrings <laughs> I've done so far. Not really, I'm just kidding. Other leg, let's go. Fifteen, sixteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and thirty. Yep, it is all loosened up. So, next movement is donkey calf raises for 100 reps. Now you do as many as you can and you take a rest, all right? So I'm gonna do as many as I can and I'm gonna rest as required. This is just volume work. This is to activate the hamstrings and the calves because we're working hams today and we're gonna need all the blood we can get to fill them up and actually create hypertrophy, right? For all of you gym bros out there, you might say that I'm doing a lot of volume work, but then you gotta realize that there's two kinds of hypertrophy, right? There's sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and myofibrillar hypertrophy. Sarcoplasmic is when you actually swell the sarcoplasm of each sarcomere, right? So you swell each cell. Myofibrillar hypertrophy is like what I do, right? I'm dense, I'm strong as fuck, right? That kind of hypertrophy is where you put so much strain on the muscle that you need more cells, you need more motor units in the muscle, right? So the muscle gets more densely packed with active muscle fibers. So uh, this style of training increases your density, your force output, your strength, your endurance. Basically building a hybrid athlete. Donkey calf raises. So I'm going to try and not arch my back there. I'm going to try and hinge at the hips as much as I can. Every time you feel that slipping and you're tiring out and doing that, take a break. Reset, right? So you could do your donkey calf raises right here. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Ooh. So 
so I needed a rest there. Um, I guess I'll do five sets of 20, right? And after all this, tomorrow I'm working legs. So I guess tomorrow with my leg workout, I'm going to be doing a quad focus, uh, just work on the quads, um, work on some hip extension work, hip flexion. Uh, I am doing a little hip flexion, uh, sorry, hip extension, meaning when you do like a hamstring curl or you do those kickbacks, right? That would be hip extension. This would be hip flexion, right? Where you flex it, you bring the knee close to the torso. That'll be flexion. Behind you is extension. <sighs> All right. So I guess I have only 20 more to go. Awesome. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and ooh, twenty. <sighs> Gonna have to rest a bit after those. Ooh. So hundreds of those is gonna add up. <laughs> You're gonna feel it for sure. So the main phase of the workout, we're going to be doing supersets and tri-sets, yeah? A superset is two exercises back to back with no rest in between. Uh, a tri-set is three exercises done back to back with no rest in between. So you do the two exercises in a superset and then you rest, right? Same thing with uh, a tri-set. You do the three exercises back to back and then you rest, right? So that is one set. Um, we're going to be doing the first superset, hanging hamstring curls. So I'm going to be using the pull-up bar over there. I'm going to be doing four sets of eight. Hanging hamstring curls, uh, supersetted with hanging leg raises, right? So I'm going to put on the ankle weights right now and uh, we'll get started. Oh, 
I like working my hamstrings. They used to be so weak. I used to be this weakling guy, right? When I was young. And uh, I started working out, which was in like 2012. We're gonna make a separate video detailing my story and all of the challenges I faced and stuff like that. But anyway, that's to say that now, hamstrings are one of my favorite uh, body parts to work out. And I'm significantly stronger in the hamstrings and overall significantly stronger. Alright there, we're, we're set up so uh Four sets of eight. So this is basically a warm up for my back as well because I'm like hanging, right? So I'm working my grip strength as well. Maybe I'll do them this way. So that is one set of the supersets. Those are not easy. Uh, these ankle weights are only about like 11 pounds, right? But they add up, they add up, yeah. So rest is required, not more than 60 seconds, all right? Believe me, those are hard. Come on. Eight. Oh my God. The hanging leg raises are basically gonna put a ton of strain on the lower core there. I'm not gonna take my shirt off yet. Still got a little fat to cut off, yeah? Until I'm fully ripped. Um, but yeah, I will. I will. I'll take my shirt off soon, soon enough. Just uh, working on a few things here, you know?
All right. The next exercise is a super or set again, super set. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, super set again. We're gonna be doing dumbbell bent over rows and a kettlebell mid back row. And then chest. Sorry, that's a. I worded that wrong. Let me just correct that. Sorry, let me just correct that. Okay, that is also a tri set. A tri set, uh, three sets of six reps. So, if you can see what I've done there, tri set. Can you see that clear? Okay, great. So the chest to pull up bar is uh, to failure. Yeah. So the other two exercises, I'm doing six reps, six reps, and then I'm gonna fail on the pull-ups, right? So my chest to pull-up bar means I'm not just like pulling up here, right? I'm arching right here, and I'm going back there, yeah? You see that? So I'm gonna be not doing my pull-ups here. I'm gonna be trying to arch my back and pull up here. So uh, you will see those, they're amazing. All right, three sets of six reps. Maybe I'll leave these on because they're kind of a pain in the butt to take off. And well, they're not too bad, but I'm gonna, oh, fuck it, I'm gonna take it off. Oh, that thing right there is just like a vein or like, yeah, just a vein that pops. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I'm putting this on. This kettlebell is 60 fucking pounds. Gets heavy as hell. Oh yeah. All right. So uh, three sets of six, yeah? We're tri-setting. Can you see me there? Good. So I'm going neutral grip. I'm gonna bend my knees right there. Pull, exhale, inhale. Exhale, three, four, five, six. Drop that, we go over to the kettlebell. In the mid back row. You see that? I'm not doing that. I'm right here. Yeah, and I'm pulling it to my sternum. Center bone in, in your chest, yeah? Uh, 
Ah. Now we're in pull ups. I stopped at five right there because it's tough as hell with this vest on. Oh, yeah, it's tough, man. A timer. Oops. I'm suffering. Oh. I find pleasure in the pain of training. It's a, uh, it's medicine, right? Movement is medicine. Resets your mind, clears you out, helps you shed all of the negative energy. I'm not gonna say negative. Well, you know, because it plays its part, right? It needs. It needs to come out, it needs to uh, be expressed. I'm gonna say lower frequency energy that is not in alignment with your greater good. So exercise helps you get all of that shit out. I'm ready for a set, let's go.
Alright. Last, last. Oh god. Ah. Uh. Triceps. Three sets of six reps. Yeah? That was amazing. Alright, what are we doing next? I'm gonna. I wanna leave this vest on. Yeah. We're doing a tricep for the shoulders. So, this muscle right here is the deltoid, right? There are three heads of the deltoid, they're not separate. The anterior, or the frontal head, the lateral, or the medial head, of the delt, and then the posterior, or the rear deltoid, right? So the shoulder is made up of three heads of the muscle, yeah? So what you're seeing there is the lateral or the medial and the frontal, right? So they're frontal, medial, and in the back, that is the rear deltoid. So we're gonna be using these 10 pound dumbbells. And again, it's a tricep. So I'm gonna be doing front raises, side raises, and then bent over and rear delt raises. Back to back and then rest. So we're gonna be doing three sets of 10. Gonna get these out of the way. Get my little monster kettlebell out of the way. The mat. All right. I need a little more rest before I get started here. Oof. I feel my coffee kicking in <laughs> when I'm halfway through my workout. Uh, I should have started drinking the coffee about half hour before the workout. You ready? Three sets of ten. So we're gonna go front. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And now out to the side. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, four, three, two, ah. Oh, these 10 pound dumbbells get heavy as hell. So for the rear deltoid, I'm gonna be doing this and opening it out. What that looks like is here. Yeah? I don't just work out like this just because I'm on camera. I just happen to be recording what I regularly do, right? All of this is unscripted, like, I'm not scripting, I'm not like writing down what I need to say and stuff like that. Like, I want you to get a good feel of who I am. My rawness, my authenticity, right? I'm 
want these videos and this channel to be as natural as possible. It's not forced. It's clean energy, right? You notice I was using a little hip drive there, a little hip drive, right, to just throw the weights up. For again, for those gym bros who'd be like, no bro, you're using momentum and stuff. It depends how you're training. So that's two sets down in the tricep. Uh, now we're going to be doing our third set, third and final set. Let's stand at an angle so you kind of see, get a different uh, view right here. Come on. Eight. Come on, two more. Ah. That was hard as shit. Look at me sweating, yeah? Oh, fuck. That was not easy. Ah, but I pulled through. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna take this vest off. Oh my God.
I like to shower before my workout. The clean sweat is a different feel altogether, right? Sometimes I'll shower like three times a day. And I don't care, all of you guys will be like, oh no, you're showering too much here. You're, you're gonna wash off all of your beneficial bacteria and stuff. I use like good quality soap. I use like herbal soap, right? It's not like I'm using chemicals and shit. Next exercise, two sets of 12 prone cobras. That's 12 reps, we're going to do one more set, as soon as I recover. So I got single leg hamstring curls. These are standing and not hanging off the bar. So I'm gonna have to put these weights on again. Alright, two sets of 10 on each leg.
We're getting close to the end of a workout. I got one more set of hamstring curls and then chin ups to failure and hanging with leg raises to failure. Or, sorry, was that hanging leg raises and then chin ups? Um, just as a final burner, right? Uh, second set, last set of hamstring curls. I'm gonna take my time with the reps this time, alright? I did about 20 of the hanging leg raises. This felt like I couldn't push anymore. So I guess this workout, you guys actually saw me suffer. Um, and this is my own doing, right? Because I programmed this workout for myself and it wasn't easy. So yeah. As you start working out, you learn the limits and the thresholds that you'd like to break past. And uh, that's where all of the change happens, right? When you break past your boundaries and you, your physical barriers, I should say. Uh, So the last thing we're doing today is chin-ups to failure. Chin-ups meaning it's an underhand grip, right? Supinated, pronated. So when you do a pull-up, it's in a pronated grip. This would be a supinated grip. So we're doing chin-ups to failure. Maybe I'll probably be able to do only like five or six. It's because like everything hurts right now. And I'm uh, super grateful that it does. Oh yeah.
Look at that sweat patch. Nice, eh? I worked hard, as you can tell. This is my raw workout form. This makes me so happy that I can do this because I couldn't always do this, right? I used to be unfit, super unfit. I was dysfunctional, not symmetrical, just broken, shitty posture, low self-esteem, low confidence. I couldn't engage with people, couldn't engage in conversation. I couldn't walk up to a girl and talk to her, right? And then fitness just happened. Of course, I've had, I've had amazing mentors. I've had amazing teachers taught me so much along the way. And, you know, I've had like the right guidance. And now I guess I'm here to change whoever's life. You know, you come to me and if you want like guidance or whatever, like, sure, I will help you. Because it's helped me, and now it's my turn to share. So, uh, for those of you who did the workout, props to you. That was not an easy workout. Thanks for uh, doing this with me. Thanks for being on my channel. You know, this is new to me. Um, and it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, I think I'd like to stay consistent with this. Um, I think it's a good platform for me to engage with so many more people. You know, I have been changing people's lives in person, but I think on this YouTube platform, I'm going to be able to touch so many more people's lives. And uh, I've only just started, so and not all my videos are going to be about training, right? There are going to be videos on talking and different topics, all kinds of stuff. So uh, wait for that. Stay tuned. And until next time, take care.